In this video, we'll go over a high-level explanation of both DFS and BFS, provide visual examples to understand when to use them, and we'll also solve a leak code problem for each algorithm. DFS starts at the root node and explores as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. In this tree, DFS would visit node 1, then go to node 2, move down to 5 and 6 before backtracking to 2, then moving to 3. This method explores depth first, ensuring all descendants of a node are fully explored before moving to the next sibling. Here's an example of how DFS can be used to solve a maze. Starting from a point, DFS explores each possible path, diving deep into one direction until it either finds the solution or hits a dead end, in which case it backtracks. In this maze, DFS traces out a path by moving forward and then backtracking when necessary until it finds the solution, as shown by the red path. This approach ensures that no potential solution is left unexplored. Here is a simple implementation of DFS. The function takes a node as input. First, it marks the node as visited to avoid revisiting it. Then, it loops through each neighbor of the current node. If a neighbor hasn't been visited yet, the DFS function is called recursively on that neighbor. This process continues, diving deeper until all reachable nodes from the starting node have been explored. Finally, the function returns, completing the depth-first traversal. BFS starts at the root and explores all nodes at the present depth level before moving on to the next level. In this tree, BFS would visit nodes in the order 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, and 7. This approach is great for finding the shortest path in unweighted graphs. BFS is perfect for finding the shortest path in a grid because it explores all possible routes level by level. Starting from the source, BFS spreads out evenly, checking all nodes at the current distance before moving on. In this example, each level of nodes is visited one at a time, showing how BFS guarantees the shortest path by exploring all nodes at each level before proceeding. Here's an implementation of BFS. We start by marking the start node as visited and creating a queue, then enqueue the start node. While the queue isn't empty, we dequeue the first node in the queue and call it the current node. Then, for each neighbor of the current node, if the neighbor hasn't been visited, we mark it as visited and enqueue it. This process continues, exploring all nodes level by level, ensuring we visit each node at the shortest possible distance from the start node. Now let's take a look at two leet code problems and see when we should use DFS and when to use BFS. This first problem is maximum depth of binary tree. It is asking us to find the maximum number of nodes along the path from the root node down to the furthest leaf node in a binary tree. Essentially, it requires calculating the greatest depth or height of the tree, where depth is defined as the number of edges from the root node to the deepest leaf. This involves exploring each path from the root to all leaf nodes and determining which path is the longest. The goal is to return the length of this longest path. We know it's a tree problem, so it will use either DFS or BFS. So how do we decide which one to use? Do we need to explore all complete paths? Yes. Do we need to backtrack to explore different branches? Yes. Do we need to do a level order traversal? No. Do we need to find the shortest path between two nodes? No. Since we need to explore all complete paths and backtrack to explore different branches, we know we will need to use DFS. Now that we have decided we want to use DFS, let's write the function for it. Here is our max depth function. Let's go through it and understand how it works line by line. We start by defining a function named max depth. It takes one parameter, root, which represents the root node of a binary tree. The first line inside the function checks if the root is none. If the root is none, it means the tree is empty, so the function returns zero. This is the base case for our recursive function. If we reach a leaf node's child, which is none, we return zero, because the depth of an empty tree is zero. Next, the function makes a recursive call to itself with root left. 
This call computes the maximum depth of the left subtree of the current node. The result is stored in the variable left depth. Similarly, the function makes another recursive call to itself with root. Right. This call computes the maximum depth of the right subtree of the current node. The result is stored in the variable right depth. Finally, the function returns 1 plus max left depth right depth. The max left depth right depth part finds the greater depth between the left and right subtrees. Adding 1 accounts for the current node's depth. This ensures that we count the current node in the total depth of the tree. The second problem is binary tree level order traversal. This problem asks us to return the level order traversal of a binary tree's node's values. This means we need to traverse the tree level by level, starting from the root, and return the values of nodes at each level in a list of lists. Essentially, this involves visiting all nodes at depth 1, then all nodes at depth 2, and so on, until all levels of the tree have been traversed. The goal is to return a list of lists where each inner list contains the values of nodes at that level of the tree. We know this is also a tree problem, so it will use either DFS or BFS. So how do we decide which one to use? Do we need to explore all complete paths? No. Do we need to backtrack to explore different branches? No. Do we need to do a level order traversal? Yes. Do we need to find the shortest path between two nodes? No. Since we need to traverse the tree level by level, BFS is the ideal choice. Now that we've decided on BFS, let's write the function for it. Here is our level order function. Let's go through it and understand how it works line by line. We start by defining a function named level order. It takes one parameter, root, which represents the root node of a binary tree. The first line inside the function checks if root is none. If root is none, it means the tree is empty so the function returns an empty list. This is the base case that handles the edge condition where the tree has no nodes. Next, the function initializes two important variables, result and q. Result is an empty list that will eventually hold the final output, which is a list of lists where each inner list contains the values of the nodes at a particular level of the tree. The q is initialized with the root node inside a deke. This queue will help us perform a level order traversal, also known as breadth first traversal, of the tree. The function then enters a while loop that continues as long as there are nodes in the queue. This loop will allow us to process each level of the tree one by one. Inside the while loop, we first determine the number of nodes at the current level by setting level size equal to the length of the queue. This tells us how many nodes we need to process in the current level. We also initialize an empty list called current level, which will temporarily hold the values of the nodes at this level. Next, the function enters a for loop that runs level size times. In each iteration of this loop, a node is removed from the front of the queue using pop left, and its value, node.val, is added to the current level list. This step ensures that all nodes at the current level are processed and their values are recorded. The function then checks if the current node has left and right children. If the left child exists, it is added to the queue. Similarly, if the right child exists, it is added to the queue. This ensures that all children of the current node will be processed in the next iteration of the while loop. After all nodes at the current level have been processed, the current level list is added to the result list. This records the values of the nodes at this level in our final output. Finally, once the while loop is complete and all levels of the tree have been processed, the function returns the result list, which contains the values of the nodes in the tree level by level.